Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and in today's video, we are going to be expanding the auxiliary lighting I have on my Ram Rebel. So, in the last couple of videos, I started with a 20 inch light bar that I installed from OZ USA. I installed that in the lower grill of the truck, and that covers basically the spot. So, that's shining down the road in the center of the road, uh, giving me the coverage, extending, I guess, the coverage in the middle of the lane. Now, what we're looking at here are A pillar brackets, and what this is allow will allow me to do is run ditch lights. I do a lot of driving in deer country here in the Midwest, and a lot of times those deer like to hang 10, 15 feet off the road. So with these lights, what you could do is cock them over to the side on each side, and you'll be able to see the deer. So these are part number Z364721. So I purchased just the brackets. You can also get the brackets plus Z-Road's uh, LED pods. So once we get the Z-Road brackets installed, we're gonna be installing a set of the three inch cubes from OZ USA. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of OZ USA. I already have their 20 inch light bar, the HD20 in my lower grill. And I figure why not keep everything the same and go with the three inch cubes up on the A-pillar brackets. But like I said, you can buy the Z-Road's kits with the LEDs included in the kit. Also comes with wiring harness and switch. Uh, but for my application, I went ahead and, and picked up these lights, mostly because I have a lot of experience with these lights. I use these same ones on my GMC. Once we install the zero brackets, we're going to install the OZ 3-inch LED pods on top of that. And then what we're going to do is grab another one of the harnesses from our Trigger 4 Plus uh, controller, and that will allow us to wire up everything. Now again, this gives you a positive and a negative. It doesn't give me the DRL circuit. I still haven't quite figured out exactly what I want to do as far as the DRL lights. Like I, like I did on the 20 inch light bar, I left that white wire taped off to the side. I could always run a power to it later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to power the main LEDs. I really want those the ditch lights uh, sooner than later. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of that. So what do you get in the Z-Roads kit? So you get the brackets, obviously. You get the instructions. Most importantly, you get a sticker. So that's the first thing you should be putting on your truck. And then what you get is a couple screws for mounting uh, either LEDs or mounting plates to the actual brackets themselves. So the reason I went with the Z-Roads kit over the other one, so for the Ram Rebel, there's basically three kits on the market. Uh, there's the Z-Roads and then two other kits. The Z-Roads are the only ones that actually mount to the underside of the hood. The other A-pillar brackets actually mount underneath the cowling. And what that requires you to do is end up trimming it. So let me grab this bracket here. Okay, so like I said, there's three different versions of the A-pillar bracket you can get. So the Z-Roads one is the only one that attaches up underneath here. So basically what you do is you back off these bolts or these nuts a little bit, slide the bracket on there, and then tighten everything down. The other A-pillar brackets actually go underneath here. And what that requires you to do is you end up having to trim a piece of this, and I don't want to do that. I want a 100% bolt-on kit. And I've been eyeballing the Z-Roads one ever since my GMC days. Uh, so I wanted to give them a shot here. Um, and I also like the fact that the lights actually mount up underneath the hood so it gets it up out of the way over here. Then you're not monkeying around with anything. Tools, what do you need to do this? Obviously, some electrical stuff because you're gonna be tapping in the circuits and running power and whatnot. And then the, really the only physical tool you need is a 13 millimeter socket. Um, also grab some tape. So we're gonna grab some drywall tape or some masking tape just to put on that bracket. And again, the reason you do that is to make sure that you keep your hood aligned. Um, so let's go ahead and get one of these brackets installed and I kind of walk through the process there. Okay, so I went ahead and put my tape on there and then I backed off the nuts and what you'll notice, the first thing that'll happen is the hood, even though I'm only doing one side at a time, it's heavy enough to shift the whole hood down. You can see it went down about, I don't know, quarter of an inch. So that's why you put the tape there. So basically after you put the bracket on there and before you tighten everything down, you're going to want to pull the hood back up this way since it's shifted down a little bit just to realign everything. So you're gonna to wanna to line up the edges of this tape just to get as close as possible. Then the other thing you do to check alignment is basically just check how it interferes with this seam here. You want a nice even seam on both sides. So um, just for frame of reference, it did shift about a quarter inch. So I know I gotta pull it up a quarter inch before I tighten everything down. So the next thing I'm gonna do is slip the zero bracket from that side and then just slip it basically in here. These brackets only go one way. The one with the Z-Road emblem goes on the driver's side. The one without the emblem goes on the passenger side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that guy installed and then uh, we'll tighten up everything. All right, it is as simple as that. So like I said, you loosen this, or I'm sorry, first thing you wanna do is throw that piece of tape on there. This is just so you have a frame of reference as to where this bracket sits in relation to the rest of the hood. Uh, I had basically this top bolt almost completely off and then this one uh, was just uh, loosened up just a little bit. Once the hood was loosened up, it did shift down a little bit. So then the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and slide your Z-Road bracket on there and before you tighten it down, 
grab the bottom of the hood. So what I did is I grabbed from here and I basically pushed the hood up. So I pushed it that way and I pushed it as far as I could. So the bolts inside here hit the top of this bracket and then that lined up my, my reference tape. And then I tightened everything down here. Be careful that these bolts are painted. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you tighten them down and then come back a couple, uh, a couple hundred miles later and check on them because painted bolts do have a tendency to, once they're kind of disturbed here, they do have a tendency to slip uh, loose but that bracket is on. So the other thing you could do after you install the bracket, don't shut your hood, but gently lower it just to make sure the seam from the fender and the hood is even. Now the hood's not completely closed, but I did check and everything lines up perfectly. And there you go. Now we got a mounting platform for our ditch lights and it puts the light nice enough out to the side. So you got the coverage here. So you got plenty of coverage coming out this way, which is what you want to do because you want to wash this side of the road or whatever trail that you're on. So let's go ahead and get the rest of that blue tape peeled off over here, then head over to the driver's side, do that, and then we'll get our OZ USA pods thrown on here and start wiring everything up. But again, super simple installation. Like I said, that is one of the main reasons I went with these guys over the other brackets because then you'd be pulling up this, starting to trim this, then it looks like kind of a little, it would look kind of like crap. These get them up out of the way. It puts the lights further up here and then gives it definitely enough uh, travel to the side to get that light out, off, uh, off your hood and out to the side of the road. So let's get that blue tape peeled off and rock and roll on the driver's side here. All right, so we got our brackets installed. They're nice and low profile. You could probably barely see them there. Uh, one word of advice, there is some adjustability to them and you wanna make sure that you have enough clearance between the corner of your hood and the edge of the bracket. So if you do loosen up everything, you'll notice once you put this on, it will hit that corner. So just make sure you got a little bit of coverage there. Um, but these things are solid. So that's the passenger side bracket. And then we have our driver side bracket here and we're good. So now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and mount our OZ lights up on there. And then we're gonna start the fun part, which is actually running the wires. A couple things to note on these guys. Again, the other reason I buy L OZ uh, lights over um, the other Amazon special ones is the connections are awesome. These are solid connections. They're waterproof. They'll handle Midwest winters perfectly fine. Uh, and their lights themselves can handle the Midwest as well. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and throw the brackets uh, that came with the lights on the lights. That way we can get these mounted up on the Z roads bra on the Z roads A pillar brackets. And then we're going to start running the wires for everything. So like I said, the Z roads package does come with its own relay harness. So if you don't have a trigger or anything like similar to that or uh, accessory panel already run, you could use theirs to run it. Uh, I'm going to borrow some of the harness from here, but ultimately I'm tying into my existing trigger uh, controller. All right, so I got the OZ uh, LED pods installed on the brackets. It's a very close fit, so be super, super, super careful with your paint. Um, if you pull the bracket as far to this side, or I'm sorry, the light as far to this side as possible, then it gives you plenty of clearance. This isn't going to move any fit. It's a very solid bracket. Um, but just kind of loosely put everything in there until you could aim these later on at night. Uh, so I have the wire passing from the LED and then it tucks up underneath the bracket itself, the zeroes bracket, and then it comes out right here. And my plan right now is to zip tie it to the hood uh, struts. And then this power wire is gonna come this way. That way I can get it down and then I could follow this little channel here to get it across to the other side. All right, so the wiring is finished up and let's take a look at the routing here. So, got the pods installed on the zero brackets. The cable or the power cord for the pods cuts off and cuts to the inside of the hood, comes underneath. Now my original plan was to trace this hydraulic all the way down with the wire, that way I had something that I could zip tie the wire all the way down to. But I've realized that it's actually easier to hug the hinge and if you route the wire up over the top of the hinge, it's up and out of the way and it's out of the way of any sort of pinch points. So I have the cable routed up over the top of the hinge and then on the outside of the hinge and it basically follows the inside of the fender and then that cable pops up over here. So then I run it across here and then basically following the same power wire I ran for my 20 inch light bar. So then we go to the driver's side uh, pod here. Same thing, I cut on the inside of the zero bracket, zip tied everything just to hold it up and out of the way. I run that cable down here up over the bracket. This one was kind of a pain in the butt because there's a ton of wires here with all the batteries and whatnot, or all the battery and whatnot. 
So I took this power wire and ran that completely inside the fender. That popped out just right here. So we have the driver side pod right here. We have the passenger side pod here. I tee them in and splice them in together to my power. I ran the power for the channel two on my trigger four. Cuts down, up, over, and connects right here. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, these lights had the DRL circuit, so I went ahead and put a little bit of a lead on there. That way, later on, when I come back in, I could plug this into the same DRL circuit that I'm going to do for the 20-inch light bar. But for now, I have just the power and ground hooked up, so just the main uh, lights themselves uh, connect. So after running the wires and everything, it's as easy as just connecting what's left of the Trigger 4 harness, and then you're good to go. So cleaned up everything. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and throw that shroud back on here. I got a couple wires I want to zip tie up out of the way, but for the most part, you can't see any of the wires. So it's pretty discreet. I'm happy with that. Um, so let's go ahead and like I said, I'm gonna throw a piece of tape over here so we don't have a, a metal banging around in there. And then I'm going to throw the shroud on and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the lights when they power on. All right, so I got everything cleaned up, got the hood completely shut. Just taking a look at our pods here. Got our driver side one and our passenger side one. So I got the wireless trigger out of the car. Uh, the beauty of this one is you just kind of pop it out and then you can bring it with you if you want to functionally test anything. So we got our sticker on there indicating channel two is now the ditch lights. Let's go ahead and boom, we got light. Off, on. So it's gonna take a little bit to aim these, but basically what I'm gonna be using these for, again, is ditch lights. So I'm gonna have them kind of cocked out to the side a little bit just to wash the ditches. Uh, so especially when you're driving up to uh, deer country late at night and you got those deer that are hanging out on the road, these are there to help with uh, finding them and actually showing them so you know you can slow down and whatnot. Uh, so just for good measure, we have our eight pillars on and now we have our 20. So I'll come back with a video a little bit later on tonight when it's a little bit darker out and we can take a look at the coverage and I'll throw on these things. But again, these are the spots. Uh, these lights do come with diffusers that clip on over the top of them. However, I found that on the last ones that really, that diffuses too much light and it's basically useless. So then it's just a bright light. It's not really doing anything. It's not carrying any of the lights. Uh, so let's wait till it gets darker out and then we could take a little test drive with the lights and see how it does uh, with, uh, you know, dark roads. All right, guys, I'm going to do my best to show you the light coverage of these pods up against my garage door just to kind of show you how I pattern them. Now, I will say they're not fine. They're not in their final location, uh, but they're pretty close. But what I try to do is pull my truck basically completely center with my garage door. So if you look at the top of the garage, you see that little gray spot. There's a little gray brick there. That's basically the center of my light pattern as it is. And right now, the only thing I have on are my headlights. So now if I put my fog lights on. You can kind of see those, but for this, we'll uh, we'll turn those guys off. So now let's go ahead and throw on. Well, also keep in mind that my driveway slanted, so I'm kind of looking up at the door. So A pillars off. This is just the regular headlights. Now those are the A pillars. So you can see what I did is basically adjusted them so they shine kind of at that angle. So if you see, let's see, we got the center right here. We got one, two little indents on the door. And then you get the light, so same thing on that side. So that way they're both kind of washing at uh, the, the right angle. And then they're basically pointed down as far as they could go on the brackets. And again, keep in mind, I'm pointing up. So without, just the headlights. Now I will say, for stock headlights, these are pretty damn good. There's really good cutoff on there. And then there's your pods. So let's do our 20 inch light bar. Now that's a low light bar. So that's actually a spot out the low end. So when you're driving around, that definitely washes in front of you. And then we got our LED pods. Okay, I actually found a really good spot to test out and kind of show you the uh, coverage and I was able to adjust my cubes just a little bit more on the pillars to aim them to where I want them. So right now we have just the headlights. So there's my center light bar. And like I said, it's really there just to wash in front of me and now my ditch lights. So hopefully the camera's picking it up, but what you can see now is really in this section over here, you could definitely see how it's shining off into the ditch. Now maybe it needs to go a little bit more to the angle, uh, but I actually really like this coverage pattern. The, the light pattern is, it's it's nice even across the board and kind of gives me plenty of light. So again, we'll turn off that light bar, turn off that guy. So let's turn everything on and then I'll throw the brights on. That brights don't really do much. Anyway, that's what you can see. So we'll go 
no pillars, pillars, no pillars, pillars. And I hope the white balance is kind of keeping up with this. Uh, but again, it's really shining a lot of light on each of the sides of this road. And this is this hill is a little bit of a hill, or I'm sorry, this road's on a little bit of a hill, so it's not the best thing, but it's what I got uh, where I live. So uh, we'll go with it. Anyway, thank you very much again for watching the video. Appreciate it. Definitely check out my other videos. Like, comment, and definitely, 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 it really helps me if you could subscribe to my channel. Other than that, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it, guys.